Oh, hello, and thank you for joining me. I'm Tim Botuk, and this is the joy of painting Middle Earth, a time when we come together to paint the most fantastic landscapes Middle Earth has to offer. And maybe we'll paint a scary one a time or two. That can be quite fun, you know. Now, I may not be the best painter in the Shire, but I do love it so, and I'd love for you to paint right along with me. So if you're ready, grab your paints and your brushes, and let's go on an adventure. Okay, and welcome, welcome. We're ready to go. We've got this canvas prepared for you today. And how did we do that? Oh, we just took a little bit of acrylic black gesso paint, and we painted the bottom of the canvas, and we left that top open for the sky. And it was just left white, and what I've done, now that that acrylic gesso has dried, I came in with a liquid white, a magic white, that's right. We put that right on the top to give us that wet on wet technique. And then we took a little bit of black and sap green, ivory black and sap green mixed together, and we just put that over that bottom part, just to give it some color to mix into. That's right, the way that Bob Ross the Blue, you know, the Blue Wizard, he used to come to the Shire when I was just a boy, and he taught us all how to do this. So let's get to this. Today we have a scene, oh, it's going to be, oh, it's the sun is setting, so the sky is going to be a bit yellow. So we're just going to take some of our titanium white here, and we're going to scoop up some of our cadmium yellow. That's what that is. That's right, we have alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, sap green, ivory black, cadmium yellow, uh, bright red, and of course titanium white. So we're just going to mix this right onto our brush, and we're going to come up here, and we're just going to pick a spot right back here, and oh, we'll say this is, maybe the sun is right there, and then we're just going to come out, and that's very bright yellow, but that's okay. We have that liquid white underneath, that magic white. That's going to tone it down. Now, if you have to, when you're doing this, put a big old hobbit foot right on your easel to steady that out, and we just bring this out like this. That's right, that bright sun, right in there. Oh, you can see, I may have had some other colors still on this brush because I used it when I put the color in down here. I cleaned it off, but some of it remained. That's okay. That's okay. It just gives us, oh, it just gives us something else going on in our sky. We just mix that in. And you see, we have this nice, bright golden sky. It's the fall. That's right. It's autumn, my favorite time of year. That's right. And if you know a good book to curl up with on a chilly weekend, oh, The Hobbit is one of my favorites. That's right. There and back again, Mr. Bilbo's Journey. And that's what we're painting today. We're painting a scene from old Mr. Bilbo's Journey. That's right. So we just mix that in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wash off this brush and then we'll just tone this down a bit. So we got that brush. We're just going to wash it in our odorless paint thinner. That's right. And old Timbo is going to have to be careful not to do too much washing today because I forgot to pick up. I forgot to pick up some more odorless paint thinner, but we have a rubbish bin down here. So we're just going to beat the Sauron out of the brush. That's right. Just the way that old Bob Ross the Blue used to teach us how. There we go. Now that brush is nice and clean, we're going to come back up here. Oh, you can see there's some things in the sky there, but that's all right. Just using crisscross strokes, take those out. And you don't have to come all the way down. We're going to have some land and some stuff here. There we go. That'll... That'll be our horizon will be right about here. That's right. These are going to be trees down in the foreground. And then just far off in the distance, there's going to be a mountain. Oh, not any old mountain. You know which mountain. The lonely mountain. That's right. Oh, let's come. Let's put some clouds in here real quick for us. There we go. Now, 
we're going to make some clouds. We want those clouds to be a bit of a gray color because that sun is behind them. So it's not catching the light of the sun. We're just going to use some titanium white and we're going to come in just a touch of our ivory black. Oh, we'll make those a little gray, but we want, oh, maybe we want just a, a tinge of purple in there. Just those nighttime clouds. So there we go. We have that maybe come with a little blue. We've got some of our alizarin crimson. Oh, maybe we can even make that a little darker. We'll see. That might be too much blue I'm grabbing, but that's okay. That looks a little too blue. We want to darken that up, make it a little more purple. There we go. That's looking like the color we want. Let's just come in. Let's come in and put some of these purple clouds in. So we're just going to just taking our brush now. We're just we've got that on there and we're just going to roll that in. There you go. And that gives us a nice a nice cloud off in the distance. Off in the distance. We're not going to overpopulate it with clouds today. But oh, you'll see, we'll just roll in a few clouds here and there, here and there, there we go. Maybe we'll come back, get a little more of this, a little more of this, and maybe right up here. Maybe that comes this way. Those are just kind of rolling past. There we go. Some misty clouds up there. And maybe we've just got a little bit of this paint left. We're just gonna put that on the brush and we'll come with one right here. There we go. There we go, very long clouds. These ones, oh, they're just getting blown around. That's right, that's right. We're just gonna take that brush Not even going into the paint thinner. We're just, just knocking it right off the brush there. And it doesn't matter if we have a little bit of that color left. We're just gonna come and we're gonna soften these clouds. That's right. So we're gonna roll it out here on the bottom. Just on the bottom of this cloud. Leaving the top edge, you're not getting into that too much. Just softening those bottoms. There we go. There we are. Just knock some of that off. Come back and do the same to this one. And down here. Just doing little circles there. Now we want to get this clean again. So we've knocked that paint off. There we go. And we're just going to come and we're just going to lift, lift some of this. There we go. Lift that up, softening that out. You get those little stringy things going there. There we go. Now for this next part, we're going to come, oh, we've just got this, this is a dry one inch brush and we're just going to soften this with a one inch brush. Just using that, just soften those out. There we go. Maybe a little more lift if you need to make them a little softer. Just barely touching here, just smoothing those out. These aren't real defined clouds. These are just those soft clouds at sunset. There we go. You just want to take the brush strokes out of there. Maybe we come, oh, maybe it's time for, oh, a little blender brush. If I love using these, these soften it up so much. They will just soften it up 
so much. There we go. Just softening that out. Just doing little circles there. There we go. And there you have it, our sky. Our sky right there is done. It's done. We just have those clouds there. Just marching past. Just pull them out that way, the direction the wind is blowing them. There we are. Nothing to it. We've got that nice autumn evening sky put in. We'll just knock some of that off of there. There we go. Now we want to come in. Now this is, this is where we have to decide which story we're painting. You see, I was told these stories by my my grand gaffer Gamgee, he would tell me the stories, and my, my grandpappy Took, he would tell me the same story, but it was a little different. You see, my grandpappy Took, when he got into his cups, he'd start to embellish the story and make things a little different. But my grand gaffer Gamgee, he always steered me straight, and he told me the story as Bilbo told it to him. That's right. So, what we're painting today is we're painting Bilbo popping up out of those trees in Mirkwood Forest. That's right, last week we painted the spiders. So we're going a little bit back in time, just just a little ways before those spiders showed up. Oh, Mr. Bilbo had climbed up the tree. The dwarves, Thorn and company, had him climb up the tree and see what he could see. To see what he could see. Now, What my grand gaffer Gamgee told me was that he couldn't see a thing. That's right. He was down in a valley, kind of a bowl, and he climbed the tallest oak he could find, but it was in the bottom of that bowl, so he could not see a thing. He said the forest went on forever and ever. That's right, and, and that was not the news. That was not the news that our dwarves wanted to hear. Oh, it caused a bit of despair in them. That's right. It did. But now my grandpappy took, he'd tell me that old Bilbo climbed up that tree and he could see all the way to the Lonely Mountain. Well, we know he was just in his cups. He had been at the Green Dragon a little too long when he started to tell the story that way. That's right. But we're going to paint it today. And just because painting Bilbo in the middle of only trees, that might be a little boring for our painting anyways. So we're gonna paint the lonely mountain off in the distance. And we'll just say Bilbo can't actually see that. He can't actually see it. We can because from our perspective, we're flying high above. Maybe we're one of those, one of those butterflies that was flying around that old Mr. Bilbo saw. So we're gonna put right over here off in the distance. Oh, look at that. That's what it is. It's the Lonely Mountain, right there. That tall mountain sticking up. Oh, that was the goal. That was where they wanted to get to. That's right. And I'm just going to leave that paint on there. Just a little thick. Normally we'll pull that off, but oh, I'm going to leave it on there and Maybe we'll come and highlight that a little bit, but then maybe off in the distance, we're just going to use this, we're just going to use this ivory black and we're just making our, hor our horizon line here. This is off in the distance. Maybe those are forests and things and, oh, you know, the lands to the north, the lands off to the north. Oh, those were not, not pleasant lands at all. No, sir. No, ma'am. Those were not pleasant areas to be. And I'm just going to take it across here. Now, for you taking your time at home, you may want to put a, a line, draw a faint horizon line 
Oh, just use a pencil. You can put that in. I wasn't thinking of it when I started this painting, so I didn't put it in there. And sometimes I tilt my head because I'm trying not to be in the way of the camera. But sometimes, and I hope you saw me draw that mountain. Sometimes I stand in the wrong spot. So this will just come this way. That's just the horizon back there. There we go. And we'll take it out this way as well. But that mountain is sticking up. And even though old Bilbo's down in the valley and he can't see it, he can't offer much hope to his party of dwarves. We're just going to pull this down, just pulling that paint, just pushing that into the, right into the canvas. And I'm just making this up as I go along. Just making it up. Not sure how it's going to turn out, but we'll just say these areas, oh, we'll say. Maybe there are some peaks that stuck up, but they're not nearly as tall as that lonely mountain off there in the distance. Just take that knife, just squiggle it around, and that'll give you a horizon line that's broken up by some distant mountain ranges. That's right, right there, and then just pull that down. Don't even know what we're doing. Don't know what we're doing. We're just putting this in. This area, is, you just can't see the colors. There's forests and trees back this way, but that's so far off in the distance and it doesn't have the sunlight lighting it because the sun is headed for its nightly slumber. There we go. There we are. Now, what we'll do is we're just going to put, oh, we'll say this is our lake. Oh, you know that lake. We're just going to use our knife, our pellet knife, and we're just going to make, this is our reflection of the mountain in the water. Just drawing it in with that pellet knife. There we go. And don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna make that look like a reflection. But for now, I'm going to clean off that pellet knife. And we're just gonna take this color we had used for the sun. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna drag drag that small end of the pellet knife through there. And since the sun is over here, this, this face of the mountain, it'll be catching some of that sunlight as it's waning in the day. There we go. And I had left that on a little thick, so I'm kind of picking up more paint than I'm leaving off. Oh, there's a fuzzy in there. Just pick that out and drop it in your rubbish bin. Right here is our mountain. Catching that last light of the day. Maybe there'll be some of that in that water there, I guess. So there we go. We're gonna come to that one inch brush that we had and we're gonna put some of that color in our water here. This is where our water will be. There we are. Knock off that paint, maybe. 
use a little of that paint thinner. Now if you have more paint thinner than old Timbo, you can go ahead and wash your brushes. Good and proper, but old Timbo, I'm just kind of improvising here. So now we're just going to take this and we're just going to pull this this mountain oh that's not looking super great our water looks very dirty that way oh but that's okay we don't make mistakes we make happy accidents that's right maybe that water is just black there we go now let's clean that off again and we'll just just use our brush to pull that water out there. We had a little much, a little too much paint on our canvas. That's okay. We'll figure out how to fix that here in a minute. That's not even the main thing of the painting, so we're not too worried about it. That's right, we're not too worried about it. Let's come back to oh, our palette knife. Now we're going to make maybe just a, a shoreline over here, just to give that some definition. There we go. And we can pull that water across. There we are. That'll make it look a little, little more like water than it was. But as I said off that direction, no, it wasn't, there wasn't much. But now we're gonna take some of that sap green. We'll just mix it into that dark color there. Just mixing that sap green in. And we're just gonna put in, oh, this was forest back here as well. We're not doing a lot of details. Some of it's darker, some of it's lighter. Very quickly, we just fill that in. Just fill that in down on that side. There's not going to be much color there. That's a long ways off. March it all the way out to the side. There we are. We've got that. Maybe come to some of the darker, just on the corner of your brush there. And let's just pop in some dark areas because those dark areas will make, they'll make shadows. That'll give you a separation in there. So it's not much, that's just off in the vast distance. A little more of that sap green. And we'll do the same on this side. Oh, I might have put that on a little thick. Let's knock some of that off. And it looks like we didn't have much of our sap green in there at all. That's okay. It'll be darker on this side. We'll say the sun's over there. You're getting a little bit of light there. And just put that in. There we go. Come up a little so you can see those trees go off into the distance. There we are. There we are. Now maybe oh, we'll wash that brush for the moment. And we do have that golden color there that was in the sky. We'll just put some of that in there on these trees. We'll say that sun is just catching the top of these trees back here. There we go. There we are. So we'll maybe even do some over on this side. Just where that last light of the day is catching those. Bring that right up, right up towards the mountain. Of course, you had the 
The fingers of the mountain, we can't really see them because we're not that close. And of course, everything close to the mountain has been desolated by Smog the dragon, that, that evil foe. That's right. There we go. So let's come down here. We're just going to pay mostly attention to this right now. That's right. We're going to go back to our, oh, we'll go back to our big, not that brush. That brush must need to be thrown out. Sometimes if you don't wash your brushes properly, you get it like this. And that thing, that's, that's as hard as a rock. Oh, take better care of your brushes, Timbo. Take better care of your brushes. All right, let's get to doing some of these trees in here. So we have this dark down, and that's going to help. That is going to help. But what we're going to do... Now in the story, when Bilbo climbed to the top of those oak trees, it was all green around him. But if I just only did green, that might be a little... That might not give our eye much to be drawn to when it's a picture like this. So what we'll do, we're going to say this is autumn. So we're going to do many colors in these trees. That's right. So we're going to take our titanium yellow and we're going to get some of our sap green. We'll pull that down. We'll make some green. There'll be some green and some yellow. There we go. Mix those together. Now let's come up here and we'll just start putting in some tree tops. Oh, the tops of these trees might be a little thick right there. So what you want to do is you want to punch these on. That's right. We're just punching that in. That gives us, it doesn't mix it so much when you do that. And we can, oh, we can even thin it out a bit. There we go. And you'll see how easily, oh, if you, if you move your hand too much, oh, you can make quite a mess. There we go. And what you want to do is you just want to fill it in. Remember, you have individual trees here. You're just seeing the top of them. So it's like, it's like a canopy of the trees. That's what you're seeing. You're seeing that canopy. And we just do this in, in layers and you leave some spots dark and some spots light. Think about how a tree would look if it was sticking up here, sticking up here. That's right. So we're just going to come in and we're going to do a lot of these trees. And just by doing that, you're creating all kinds of leaves in here. You're creating all kinds of leaves. And we're going to do Bilbo right in here. So I'm not going to make it... I'm not going to cover that area too completely. Because our Bilbo will be in there. So let's even add maybe some of this, some of that red in there. Let's get a little more. Maybe there's some trees. Oh, we have some orange trees. Or the leaves are turning orange. That's right. That's happening in there. Some trees, some trees in the fall, they'll turn one color. They'll all turn, they'll all turn red. All the leaves on the tree will turn red. Or some trees, they'll all turn orange. Or some trees, it'll just have a menagerie of colors. That's right. So you can see those trees pop up among some of the others. There we go. So that's what we're doing. We're just creating this area down here. Come over to some of this green again. A 
let that brush make some different shapes for you. There we go. Maybe we'll come with a little more yellow on some. Right over here, we'll add some, some highlights in here. And mix them in at different spots. Maybe there's that yellow tree right there. There we go. So we're getting a whole bunch of different colors on here. And then some will start, oh, they'll start mixing and they'll just be brown. But that's okay because we know some of the trees will turn brown faster than the others. You just don't want to, you don't want to kill all your dark spots. And down here it gets a little tough when you're trying to put it in right at the bottom of that easel. And I'm just, just going back and making up new colors. They're all getting mixed together here, so some of these down at the bottom are going to be more brown than right up at the top. And you have to be careful. You can see I was mixing a little bit of mud there, trying to trying to come in up here, maybe. Maybe there's this red, very red tree right here. Now again, as my grand gaffer Gamgee told me, he said, oh, it was all green. It was a sea of green that old Mr. Bilbo popped up into. That didn't give much hope to anybody in the party. There we go. And these are the tops. You have individual trees in here. And this one, it can start to look like a mess on you. That's okay. You may take a little more time than old Timbo. Old Timbo is just trying to rush through to get to painting old Mr. Bilbo. I shouldn't do that. I should take my time and show you how it turns out nice and all that. But maybe the second time we paint it. Maybe the second time we paint it. That's usually what happens the second time you paint something. Sometimes it turns out better. Other times I'm like, oh, if it had turned out that way the first time, I would have thought I couldn't even paint. There we go. There we go. Let's fill some in there. I didn't want to leave that completely blank. We have to look like Mr. Bilbo is on top of some sort of tree. But we can just put these colors in and having that black down. Oh, it's almost like cheating because it makes your colors stick out so well. It makes those colors stick out so well. And right here will be where Mr. Bilbo pops up. There we go. Now let's come in. Let's make old Mr. Bilbo. Let me find, oh, I got my filbert brush here. Got the filbert brush. Oh, let's, let's see. He's wearing his red jacket. We'll see. This might be a little too bright red, but we can always, we can always dull it down if we want. That's right. Right here is old Mr. Bilbo. Oh, 
poor Mr. Bilbo popped up. He didn't like climbing trees. He did not like climbing trees, and he wasn't that good at it. He was not that good at it. Bring his arm down this way. There we are. There. And you're saying, where are we, Timbo? That doesn't look like a thing. You're saying that doesn't look like a thing, Timbo. Oh, you're teasing us. You're pulling our leg. You're pulling our leg. Oh, well, let's put an old mop of hair on old Mr. Bilbo here. Oh, let's come. We have some of that, our burnt umber. Let's lighten that up with some of our titanium white. That might be a little too, that's a little too white. That's right. Well, Mr. Bilbo hadn't aged that much yet. No, 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 no. And let's just put a touch of crimson in there maybe. How about a touch of yellow? We're just going for this Light, there we go. There's our light brown we we're looking for. Maybe even just a touch of paint thinner. Just to make sure it sticks well. And we just come up here and oh, let's put Mr. Bilbo's head. Right here, that mop of hair he had. And of course, he's looking away from us because, you know, Timbo's not that good at painting people. That's right. Hobbits or dwarves or men or elves. Oh, I usually cheat and I have them looking away. I have them looking away. That's right. There we are. There's Mr. Bilbo stuck up there in the tree. Now let's see if we can't maybe, maybe get this to a little more of a, a skin tone. Taking a little bit of white, excuse me, not white, a little bit of red, a little bit of that brown, a little bit of yellow in there. Oh, we're getting close. We're getting close. Just take that white, mix it down right below, and then just mix up into this. See if we can't get a good, good Mr. Bilbo skin tone. Oh, there we go. That looks okay. Make sure we don't have too many other colors in there. Oh, yes. And we could be painting with all these colors. There we go. We'll just put his hands there. What appear to be his hands. There we go. Right there. Maybe come over on this side. There we are. There's our Mr. Bilbo sticking out of the tops of the trees there.
There we go. And we had our skin tone right there we use for Mr. Bilbo. Right there, just for his hands. And of course, we could have used the black, the white, the red, the brown, the purple, and yellow. But first, I gotta bang, bang, pull my boogie to the boogie. Say up, jump the boogie to the bang, bang, boogie, let's rock. You don't stop, rock the rhythm, and I'll make your body rock. Oh, that's going back to old, oh, some, some songs some hobbits would sing every now and then. And, oh, people would dance to that, that sort of thing. Oh, they came from Sugar Hill, though. That's where those hobbits were from. They were from Sugar Hill, not Underhill. That's right, a whole gang of them. All right, now we've got Mr. Bilbo in there. Let's come back. Let's come back and maybe, maybe where were we? Oh, we were with this one. So we're gonna just cover him up a little bit down there, just, just so it doesn't look like his body is cut off. Just come in, just put those trees that he's peeking out of. There we go, right there. And boy, oh boy, that one was a little simple. Oh, I may have cheated a little this week by doing such a simple painting, but oh, now there's butterflies too, but those will be very hard to paint. Those butterflies, were flying all around. There were there were small spiders that were going after those butterflies. And those butterflies, oh, they were they were black, like black velvet. That's right. They didn't have much color to them. But trying to paint black velvet butterflies, that might be a little difficult. So maybe we'll maybe we'll purple those up a bit. Give us some purple butterflies. That's what old, my old grandpappy Took would say they were. He would say they were purple but butterflies, Timbo, flying around Mr. Bilbo when he popped his head up. And my grand gaffer Gamgee would be back there just shaking his head. No, no, Timbo, don't listen to your grandpappy Took. He's pulling your leg. He's pulling your leg. They were black velvet butterflies. Oh, Mr. Bilbo told me himself. But we'll see. I've got a purple there. Maybe, and what we want to do, so this shows up. Maybe we just want to put that in there. Oh, these will be a little hard for my shaky hands. Maybe you can paint some better butterflies. Oh, but my old eyes, my shaky hands. Oh, they may not paint them so well. Or I could just say they're the black butterflies and they, you just can't see them. They're in there. They're in there. You just can't see them. There we go. Here's another one right here. And maybe another. Right by his hand there, so he'd be tempted to catch it. Oh, and you could say these were all over the treetops. You could say they were all over, so he could find any old spot and you can put those in. Put the butterflies in, there we go. And you're going, oh, Timbo, that doesn't look like a butterfly. It looks like a spot. Well, take off your glasses and then it'll look like a butterfly. That's what I say. If something isn't looking good enough, just take off your glasses. It'll look like whatever your mind wants to tell you it'll look like. And we'll put one right here. You can play around with those colors too, since we know we know they're supposed to be black and we're making them different colors. You can, you can make them whatever color you want. There we go. Oh, and of course, after this, Mr. Bilbo rejoins the company of dwarves and reports that he couldn't see a thing. It just, the forest went on forever. 
That's what he said, and oh, that upset them. They even blamed him for it. It wasn't Mr. Bilbo's fault. Why would the dwarves blame him? No, they were just frustrated. But if old Mr. Bilbo could have seen over this, he would have seen that lonely mountain back there. He would have seen that, so we just put in another butterfly right here. There we go. Not his fault at all. Oh, it's kind of fun painting these butterflies. You may have even stopped watching by now, but I'm still here painting butterflies. If you're still here, I thank you. I thank you very much. I appreciate you just watching all every little detail. Even though some of them, this one turned out, it looks kind of messy, but that's okay. Sometimes that's what painting is all about, is just making a fun mess. That's right. That is right. Another butterfly right down here. And there were spiders, like I said, trying to catch them. Spiders trying to catch those butterflies. Well, they'd better stay up at the top of those trees. They'd better stay up at the top. There we go. I think I've got enough butterflies in there. And you can come in. We can even put in some branches of the trees sticking up. But I think the tops of the trees, they're just going to stay like that. So I hope you enjoyed this one. It was a, a bit of a simple painting today. Just doing that autumn sky, that sunset sky that's coming on. And those trees there. Oh, yes. This is a fun one. One of my favorite parts of the stories. Oh, Mirkwood, it's such a spooky spot. That's right. I hope you enjoyed today's painting. And remember, if you're looking maybe to purchase some other of Timbo Took's paintings we've done together, you just go to TimboTook.com and you can find some of my prints there. And you can find t-shirts and other things, you know, things that I say, like, oh, no taters for haters. That's right. Don't let anybody give you a comment that gets you down. Just say, no taters for haters. That's right. You can't have them boiled. You can't have them mashed. You can't have them in a stew. I hope you have a good week. I hope you enjoy your week. And I hope to see you again. Goodbye and God bless.